Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to more of Nine, The Last Resort. I'm still Niggeroth, and last time you may have noticed this coin laying underneath the staircase here. I actually skipped over that just for time constraints, but since we have plenty of time now, let's go ahead and show off what it is used for. Over here in the corner is a fortune telling machine with the name Isadora plop down on the front of it and a coin slot so let's go ahead and use that coin know that Isadora welcomes you psychic friend to the last resort the last resort is not what it used to be I will endeavor to help you but only if you let me Salty dogs sometimes need help when levels of toxicity reach lofty heights. Finish with the timekeeper and restore his muse component forthwith. Journey through the silver door for adventure with four on the floor. This different drummer controls your tempo. Be attentive as he whacks his solid sticks. This is Isadora, signing off from the infinite and all the ships at sea. Well, that was certainly a collection of words, and it's actually a few helpful clues, but we won't be able to use them for a while. I'll tell you what last built. He built me a pain in the ass. You got a bee in your bonnet? You come to me. Otherwise, just try not to break nothing. And obviously, Salty has some anger issues to deal with, I assume, due to some impotence problems or a tiny penis. But there are a few more records to check out, such as this one, which is the Sounds of War in Stereo. But we can actually interact with it, allowing us to see the track listing on the back. It seems that one of them is specially marked as Thunder, called Dogfight. I wonder what that will be used for. Well, we'll actually be figuring out what that is used for in this particular video. But there are a few more records to look at over on this side. It's just some interesting artwork. For Dove. And let's see, what's this one? Um, well, that's mildly pedo. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of that one. Hey, kid, get back over here! I'm talking! I can't tell if that's supposed to be gel or del, but fetal lizard. And the final one, the country classic, Sleepy Livers. I'm not sure if he is some type of... Hyde Piper leading the sleepy lizard or er, livers on, but Hey kid, get back over here, I'm talking! Yeah, I'm not gonna listen to Salty anymore. If you couldn't tell, he, like I mentioned before, is completely useless. I just figured at least once we'd uh, listen to what he had to say. But the next place we need to go, well, is back through the tiki room and back through the gallery. Before I continue on that way though, I figured I would show off a little bit more of the artwork. Such as this ghastly piece of art. And you can actually see down in the lower right hand corner the fact that it's actually signed by pretty much the main artist of the game, Mark Ryden. He's fairly well known, and I don't think he did all of the artwork, but I think he did a majority. And that's a rather noisy piece of art. Oh, I hear a guitar. You know what that means? There's a guitar piece. There we go. We now have two out of the three guitar pieces that we need. Hopefully you remember what that, that first one we got one was. But let's check out this room. No, 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 don't go in there! Those two are up to something.
Well, Salty's an idiot. Let's go and explore anyway. Oh, stay out of there, kid! This one's mine! He'll kick your butt so bad it'll take years before you can sit down! Get out of my way! I guess I just don't have what it takes anymore, kid. Just about knocked my tail off. I wish I knew how to get that old thunder back. Well, it seems my assumption of Salty's impotence was rather correct, but he did make mention of needing back his thunder. And we might actually have a way to get back that thunder. But first, we are going to need to head to the second floor and get some exploration done up there. Also, just since I didn't look around quite as much as I should have in the first video, just looking at some of the crazy crap on the wall and assuming it might have some meaning. Like I've been saying in the thread, some of the symbolism is pretty confusing to me and my artless brain. But then some of the things are actually clues and some things are completely meaningless. But if you remember last time, we fixed this conveyor belt and we can head upstairs. The threat of violence fuels the machine of inspiration. E what? I I don't know. Not not racist at all, I guess. But yeah, there's a number of Thurston last sayings that will play uh up here, but it's kinda random how they will trigger. And let's see what do we got over here. This uh I guess we got a melancholy horn player in a cup and a pissed off guitarist. That's that's got something. That's got some meaning, I guess. And we have a microwave, but what's in the microwave? But our final guitar piece, actually. I'm sure all these guitar pieces will come together to form a very beautiful, beautiful instrument. Let's see, what do we have up here next? Well, to our left, it's a bit hard to make out, but if you remember what Isadora said, something about a shiny silver door, and that's actually what that is. But over here is obviously a phonograph or Victrola and it's a bit hard to make out but the record on there is the sounds of war so if we just set it to 13 and go ahead and play it Yes! Yes! Thanks, kid! Thanks a bunch! Stand back and watch how it's done! Yeah! Well, I'm certainly glad we got to see that particular animation, but yep. Now what we have to do is head back down to the first floor, but the problem is that conveyor belt is only heading one direction, which we're going to have to solve in just a second, but first, let's check out and see what this viewfinder has. Oh, it's 
one of the Toxic Twins, and that's actually a bar. Got a skull with a number five on it, and more spinning Toxic Twins, and, well, that's another skull, and a stripper pole. Otherwise, it just kind of seems like another place with a bunch of crazy crap, but we'll figure out what all that means probably in the next video. And over here we have a glass case with what appears to be a puzzle, but it's actually just something to make very loud noises. The actual thing we need is underneath. And it's actually a part of a very larger puzzle. We're going to need to keep a reference of this for later on. This is actually part of a four-part puzzle that's pretty much near the end of the game. But for right now, let's go ahead and figure out a way back down to the first floor via this hideous elevator. comes accompanied with normal elevator music. Oh, it appears the elevator is not working, so how do we fix that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. There's just a big-ass button. I assume the L is meant for lobby. Yeah, now we have access back to the first floor. And as you can assume, the B and A mean both basement and attic. We'll be going to those much later in the game. That is quite an ugly abomination of God. But let's go ahead and head back to that uh, room adjacent to the gallery and see if we can't do some more exploring. Well, let's hope for the best here. Just don't think that you did it by yourself, kid. All oh, salty, you smeghead. Again, we meet. Holy Again, Jesus. I Yeah, this abomination here is actually supposed to be good. I think it's named Aura. And it's voiced by Ellen DeGeneres, of all people. Who knew? But this is pretty much a throne room. It's got a number of tapestries. And behind each tapestry is a room. We're going to need to solve a couple of puzzles, though, to uh, fully explore everything in this area. First, though, we want to check behind this eye tapestry here and have this rather odd mechanism. Now, it may, it, it may be a bit hard to see on the screens, but there's now a camera lined up with the throne at the center of the room, or at the back center, I should say. And that's what we need to do with all three of these cameras. We just need to center them on the throne. And after we do that, you'll notice that the eye underneath will start to pulsate. And that's pretty much the simple solution to the puzzle. And voila! Puzzle solved. 
Now since we have all of those cameras, or in this case, eyeballs, focused on the throne, let's go ahead and have a, a seat. Nice shiny red button, let's go ahead and see what it does. It apparently harnesses the power of red, green, and blue to show us... Well, we're not actually sure what the hell it shows us. It shows us a letter and a symbol. Well, you're probably wondering what the hell that is useful for. Well, in fact, it's actually incredibly useful. Because the next tapestry we want to go to is the one to the back and far right. That is... Oh, Jesus. It's painful. The Wheel of Fortune, where you spin our fate. Yeah, so this is another fairly easy thing to set up. All we need to do is line up the letter and the symbol. And what we have now is a handy dandy decoder for what each one of these symbols is actually represented to a letter. We're going to need that for that keyboard later on, but for right now, just need to keep that in mind. And we also need to snag a two-dimensional mouse for some odd reason. But that's all we're needing in that room. We're going to go to the next tapestry over. It is a jester on a unicorn in a gated off area. That, that touches me on so many levels. How to play the guitar? I want to learn how to play the guitar. It will help me to pick up ladies. But there actually isn't a whole lot of useful of information comes here. First, then comes the melody. As the guitar Mel says, don't forget your strings. Also make sure you have a full set of strings. Otherwise it won't sound like a guitar. But this is actually the part we are going to need to remember for later. We just got so many things we need to make sure and keep note of. Like, uh, your guitar is your friend. That hole is there for a reason. Wink wink. But in this first drawer we have, well, a guitar string. But we don't actually need that. In the second drawer, well, we got another sheet of music. Just gonna jot that down in my handy dandy mental notebook. And in the final drawer, what do we have? The alphabet. That's a bit weird, but what's even more weird is the fact that on that Wheel of Fortune, actually two of the letters were missing off of it. The M and the R were actually not on it. Not that that really matters, but it's good to keep track of in case we need to know that in the future. But we finally get to put our Sometimes guitar knowledge to use here. Best. Whatever the hell that means. But yeah, let's go ahead and use all of the guitar pieces that we remember. Or I guess in this case, due to the shape, I guess it's a mandolin. And we open up a little private theater in here. I wonder what's on the projector. Memories are so transcendent here.
Well, that certainly shed a whole lot of light on this story, but we actually needed to watch that to get the film out of the way so we could actually open up the projector. <laughs> Alas, the vacuum tube is our property. Donate it back to its owners. <laughs> How could you sit there and let this happen? Quickly, track those twins into the chasm. Well, we were so close to getting our few first piece of the Muse machine, but you know, those damn toxic twins decided to take it from us. Now, what does the kitty cat want? Kitty cat wants some food. Now, that sounded very unpleasant, but for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here. Join me next time as we head into the chasm.